c'est bon. Bonsoir, bienvenue à notre premier uh, Wine Webinar ce soir. Um, good evening, welcome to our first uh, Wine Webinar. Uh, my name is Raphaël Moreau and I'm with the French American Chamber of Commerce here in Raleigh. And we are pleased to present to you uh, Thomas Meunier, who is with Eco Wine. And uh, Thomas is going to give us a presentation about the three wines from the Loire Valley. And he's a native from the area. So he will tell you all about it. And for everybody who is watching, Thomas, I already opened a bubbly. And we, <laughs> cheers. And I say to everybody, <laughs> cheers and chin chin. Go ahead. Thank you. After your presentation, we'll have a, a Q&A session. And uh, I will read you the questions and then you can answer and everybody can listen to your answers, okay? Sounds good, thank you, Raphael. Hello, everybody. So that's my first actually webinar, so I'm glad to share it with you. Uh, I decided, you know, we discuss about uh, what wine of my portfolio I should, uh, I should present uh, first. And of course, my heart is in the Loire. I'm uh, what we call a Ligérien, you know, people uh, that were born in the Loire are, are called Ligérien. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I grew up uh, in uh, the, um, the coast of the Loire, uh, when the Loire reached the Atlantic, uh, uh, in a sm small village that some French people must know, is, since it's a pretty famous seaside town called La Baule. Uh, and, uh, and I grew up uh, there, I was born a little up the river in Anceny, uh, in the, toward, uh, between Nantes and Angers, basically. And uh, I started my experience in wine working for a winery. So, you know, I'm not a sommelier per se or uh, um, uh, a really high-end onologist, but I learned the wine from the vineyard by harvesting, making the wine and following kind of the pace of the season, something I, I missed still now. Uh, because, you know, uh, the smell, for example, of the, the flooring, of the blooming season in the vine, when you arrive in the vineyard and you smell all this, uh, uh, all over the, the, the village, and, and the smell of the harvest, and the smell of all these elements that make uh, this uh, passion more than job exciting. So, my, um, uh, I worked in a, a Frédéric Mabilo winery. Actually, that's why you know I decided to present this wine. Marie was asking about this in a question, so um, uh, the that's where I, uh, I came in, into the wine world. Uh, I started in 2001 to work for Frederic. I uh, worked for him for six years, uh, and uh, you know why did I move to the U.S.? Because everybody is wondering why did he leave a winery? Why did he left leave France? And actually, I, I fell in love with a girl from North Carolina. So. I'm not going to tell you all about my love story, except if you ask questions after. Uh, I, uh, I, in 2000, uh, um, so I started the winery in 2003, and in 2009, I moved to the US, uh, basically to follow my love. Uh, we, I settled in Carborough, where, where I'm still, and I decided to, uh, to start my own French import business, French wine import business. So, um, you know, I, I, I reached out with some of my, uh, my best friends, wine, winemaker, and uh, they were all on board. And in a few uh, months, I started my uh, import business, and that's 10 years ago. So I focused on small family on estate, uh, people who care for their land. You know, I have a strong philosophy toward uh, organic farming and biodynamic farming. Uh, I believe that wine is made in the vineyard, uh, and that the focus on the quality of the fruit is the key. And I work with farmers that are the same way. You know, basically, all the wine we're drinking to, tonight uh, are either certified organic or um, to, are going to all organic. All right, so I'm going to start with uh, my uh, presentation of the Loire after speaking of myself a little bit. If you want, please, uh, some who have a, a bottle in front of, uh, of them, if it's my wines or all the wines, please don't hesitate to, to, to cheer with me. Santé, thank you for joining. Uh, so here is my little map, I love my maps. Uh, so for those who don't know, this is France. France, our country. Uh, this is Paris, uh, right here. And the Loire Valley is this river that starts in the Massif Central, 
and flow all the way until it curves in the central part of the Loire to reach the Atlantic, like I was saying, uh, toward Nantes and Saint Nazaire, where it was. So, along all this area, basically it's 600 miles. 600 miles, it's a quarter of the Mississippi, but for France it's already uh, pretty, pretty nice. Uh, it originated in the Massif Central, in the Mont Gerbier des Jones. Uh, and um, it represents, uh, and I love to show this map because it represents a fifth actually of, the, of all France with the, uh, the, the old uh, drainage bassin that we call it. So you see that the Loire is an important river on the, on the banks of the Loire, but has an influence on in all the northwest part of France. Uh, the, cli the climate, uh, we call it the climat ligérien, is pretty famous. Huh? Some uh, uh, famous writer, uh, Rabelais, who was born uh, in Chinon, uh, was praising the, the douceur angevine, you know, this uh, nice uh, way of life and climate of the Loire. Uh, it's also called the Garden of France, uh, Garden of France, because of two reasons. Huh? It's, uh, it's still now uh, the southern main region for agriculture in France. And it's also known for all the beautiful gardens, uh, the Italian garden uh, that uh, are in all our beautiful castle. It's also called the King's Valley. And you know why? Because in the Loire you have all these uh, magnificent, I mean, magnificent castles that have been built mostly in the Renaissance uh, by uh, Francis I and, and, and a few other kings after him. Uh, so you have chateaux, for those who know, like Amboise, Chenonceau, Azel Rideau, uh, all these beautiful castles uh, that have been built out of the sedimentary stone of the rock called the Tufo, that will explain a little bit after. So all this reason for the beauty of the Loire, for the climate of the Loire, for the fact that this river is one of the last wild river in Europe, uh, there's no dam to control it. Uh, it, it has been classified as a, a war patrimony uh, in the UNESCO in 2000 for the central uh, the central and the Anjou part of the world. Basically, all this is classified by UNESCO. Voilà. Voilà. I'm quite proud of my region. I think you noticed. Huh? And, uh, and, and that's, uh, that's a little bit about the, uh, the, the region, the, the geography, etc. So, a few things to know about the Loire. Huh? Uh, people associate the Loire with white wine, and I can't blame them since it's the first region of production of white wine in France. Uh, we have a, a long list of grapes that I'll present later. Um, it's also the second region for the production of sparkling wine. Uh, we're going to have one of them tonight as well. Of course, after Champagne, uh, the Loire Valley is, is pretty strong because of its location, its climate, its grapes that we'll introduce later called Chenin Blanc, uh, but also all this network of caves uh, that have been digged into the, into the, uh, the, the soil and the hillside. So, um, pretty um, mild climate, huh? uh, like you, you can see, huh? it's, it's large, huh? so you can reach oceanic climate to the continental climate. So it's pretty large, but overall, it's quite temperate. Huh? So that's why the Loire uh, have in common uh, a, a kind of lighter body, higher acidity, lower alcohol. Uh, most of them uh, are single varietal, even though we have some beautiful blends huh, in the Touraine region mostly. Uh, it's, there's a low use of oak. That's kind of a, a classic of the Loire. You, won't, you find most of the wine from the Loire, three quarters have no oak at all. Uh, so all of this reason, huh, uh, high acidity, low alcohol, low use of oak, make that actually the Loire Valley as the first uh, wine order in restaurants in France, or used to, of course. Mm. Uh, so they are food friendly, uh, uh, they are bargains, uh, because Loire Valley is still a region where the, the price of the land is quite low, uh, it uh, doesn't reach the reputation of Burgundy and Bordeaux, uh, but it's usually a region where you can find bargain because quality is skyrocketing. Uh, the, the proportion of organic farm in the Loire is higher, than the average of France. The average of France is around 10% of organic certified farm. And Loire, we're reaching uh, closely 50, 15%. So we have like a strong, really, approach to our natural wine in the Loire, making wine authentic. 
So show you a bit about the, the region of the world. Huh? So I, I, I'm going to do the region associated with the grape. Huh? So we're going to start uh, in the central part of the Loire, uh, where we're going to be with the first wine. Uh, central part of the Loire, uh, with uh, the flagship appellation, which is Sancerre, of course, or the appellation like Quincy, uh, Chateau Meillon, Reuilly, Maine to Salon. They have all in common to use two main grape varieties, Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Noir. Voilà. After the central part of the Loire, we have the Touraine region. Touraine is a patchwork uh, of terroir and, and a, the largest diversity of grape variety used in the Loire. For to remember, Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Noir, of course, we have the proximity with the central part, and Chenin Blanc and Cabernet Franc. When you go a little uh, uh, west, huh? when you are east, you're more classic toward like the central part, toward the Sancerre style. When you go uh, west, you're reaching the uh, Anjou Saumur, where Chenin Blanc and Cabernet Franc are king variety. Voilà. And then we finish with the Muscadet region, the oceanic part of the Loire, where you have two grapes, whites only, Melon de Bourgogne to make the Muscadet, and Folle Blanche to make the Gros Plan du Pays Nantais, which is kind of a, a lower tier below Muscadet. So oyster wines, of course, people associated with seafood, with, uh, with fish, etc. So really uh, a, a, a region of diversity uh, and, uh, and a complexity of grapes. So I was telling you about these four main grape variety, uh, Sauvignon Blanc, uh, Chenin Blanc, the indigenous grape of the Loire, uh, Cabernet Franc uh, and Pinot Noir, but we have also a large long uh, list of gra red grapes uh, that can be used, uh, including Malbec, we call Co, C-O-T, with a little accent. Uh, Gros Plan, yeah. Gros Plan, Marie Claire, yeah. that's the Folle Blanche, Gros Plan du Pays Nantes, that I was uh, adding to Melon de Bourgogne. Sorry, Marie Claire was questioning. Uh, so, um, so I was saying uh, Cabernet Franc, uh, Pinot Noir for the red, but we, we can use Malbec. We can use some gamay. Uh, we can even find some indigenous grape uh, that uh, uh, predated most of the uh, renowned grape, Gros Le Noir and Pinot Donis. But we won't go any further uh, uh, because we, we're going to need a night. Voilà, so here is a little presentation uh, about the main uh, um, aspect of, of the Loire. But, uh, you know, I like usually to go back to the soil because that's all what matters. You know, in France, we have this notion called terroir. Uh, terroir is a notion that is difficult to translate. Huh? It's uh, the sense of the place, basically. Uh, all the things that uh, come in the, in, in the typicity, uh, the unique expression of the place, it can be the elevation, uh, the, how steep is, uh, is uh, the, the slope, uh, the, the climate, of course, uh, and the structure of the soil. Um, you know, I, I don't want to be uh, like the, the, the French arrogant, like uh, saying that, you know, we are the best in the world. Uh, but I, I really want to insist on the fact that we are skilled winemakers, we have the experience, but we are blessed with a beautiful uh, uh, geological history. Uh, the, uh, the, um, most of the Loire, most of the best region in France uh, were underwater. Uh, so in the just Jurassic period, can you imagine this kind of lagoon uh, with uh, some island, uh, some little shallow sea uh, that for a million years uh, brought a long sedimentation and brought this different generation of limestone. I brought a little like a, a little thing that you know I like to, to show this simple drawing, and this one show you uh, how the Loire was few million years ago, right between the Massif Central and the Massif Armoricain, underwater for millions of years. And uh, these two actually uh, old massifs are important also for the geology of the, one, of, of the Loire. Because the Loire is a base of limestone, but you have also some uh, crystal, uh, crystal, some mica, some quartz that were brought by all this magmatic granite old massif that were uh, by erosion brought into the sedimentation component of the Loire. So when the, the, the shallow sea disappeared, the river do the, did the rest of the job and digged into this sedimentary uh, bassin 
to create the complexity of what we know about the Loire now. So, so that's a, that's a really important part uh, because they're going to develop for each uh, appellation uh, the, the different component of the, of the soil. So let's go to Sancerre. For, for those who have uh, the Sancerre in front, of, in front of them, the Sancerre from Eric Louis, we're going to start drinking or tasting. Huh? So Sancerre, of course, Sauvignon Blanc, right, if you follow my presentation earlier. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc, uh, a, a classic of the region, but not always, it was not always in Sancerre. You know, Sancerre historically was part of the Duchy of Burgundy. So Burgundy uh, being known for Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, the Sancerre district was historically more planted with Pinot Noir. Uh, um, and a little bit of Chardonnay, but Pinot Noir was dominant. So what did change the picture? One event that changed the whole picture of the European vineyard and the world of, of uh, winemaking. It's called the phylloxera. So the phylloxera is a small bug uh, that uh, actually did gallery, exactly, the phylloxera, <laughs> very clear. And uh, this phylloxera actually digged gallery uh, in the soil. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, and, uh, and it reached actually the, the roots and killed the vine by the roots. And it's not uh, just a random thing. Uh, it, it, it's a bug that basically destroyed most of the vineyard in Europe. Some disappeared. Some native grapes were totally uh, removed from the, the, the vineyard in Europe. And there was only one solution, is grafting with American rootstock. You know why? Because this bug was coming from the US. And in the US, most of the vines, the indigenous vines, uh, found a solution to fight the bug. So right now and still now we are grafting our French uh, 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 variety and American rootstock. What a great like business model right uh, by the way. So I shouldn't joke about it, that was a pretty pretty sad situation. So this phylloxera basically uh, uh, had the consequence that they have to, they have to uproot most of the Pinot Noir in Sancerre and in, in, in a lot of situations like this, huh, they decided to go for the most accessible, the most commercial, the most like suitable also for the area after, after many studies and they decided that Sauvignon Blanc was the one. Huh? So Sauvignon Blanc of course huh, was a little uh, 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 popular huh, down the river uh, in the Loire so that's why they, they, they saw by experience that it was going well, it was doing well. Uh, and uh, well, that's what made basically the reputation of, uh, of Sancerre. After. So Sancerre, it's, uh, it's not a large region of production, but it's, it represents around uh, 7,000 acres. Uh, 7,000 7, acres divided between 14 different villages. 400 producers, uh, so it's not like a, a huge uh, vineyard but enough to give you a, a, a lot of uh, complexity and diversity. Uh, the, um, you have to imagine uh, two different areas. Uh, the, the area of, uh, of Sancerre uh, is uh, Sancerre right here. It's right nestled between the Loire and the Bassin of the Berry. So this situation gives kind of the perfect microclimate. Uh, the, the oceanic uh, water and, and, and rain kind of uh, stop right here and fall in the bassin and the temperate uh, the temperature uh, from the Loire is keeping kind of a microclimate in this piece of the Loire. So that's why Sancerre is Sancerre for that. Uh, the, there are three types of soil and that's what interesting is that we're going to find the three types of soil in the one. Sometimes the winemaker decide to vinify them separately to show and highlight what each terroir brings to the wine. But um, Eric Louis decided to, uh, to blend them to basically take the best of each terroir. What are the three terroirs? I have my little spoon. One of them is called Cayotte. Voilà. Cayotte. Cayotte is all this little stony uh, piece huh, from, uh, from uh, limestone. Um, kind of an older generation of limestone. 
that uh, uh, actually was broken by uh, erosion. Uh, this the, the water uh, like went into the crack of the limestone, and with uh, the ice age kind of exploded and created this uh, this coyote. So that's the first uh, terroir. The, the coyote usually bring lighter wine, uh, more fruity, more accessible, uh, fresher style. Wow. So the second uh, grape is, uh, the second uh, terroir is Kimmer region Mar. Uh, so Kimmer region, uh, it's, a, it's a geological term. Uh, the Kimmer region uh, is a, a limestone richer with oyster shell and fossil. So you have uh, this, uh, uh, this marl, which is this combination of, of clay and limestone, basically. Like Chablis, where well, Marie Claire, exactly, hein, uh, the, this Kimmer region uh, uh, area that's uh, represent, represented well by the, the white cliff of Dover. Hein, if you want to see like uh, this outside, hein, uh, uh, it's quite impressive out there. Uh, so it goes in, actually in Champagne, hein, you have a, a kind of a, a strip of land that go in Champagne, reach Chablis, which is right next to Sancerre. Hein, in Sancerre Chablis, it's, uh, it's an hour or more, but not much. Hein. And you have the continuity of the Kimmer region Mal that goes into the, the Sancerre district. So it's a tiny portion. Hein. When Coyote represent 50%, hein, this, this little stony, uh, small stone, Kimmer region represent uh, around 30%. So it's a terroir that gives usually more, uh, more structure, more depth, more minerality, and this kind of salinity that is a signature of the, uh, of the Kimmer region. And the last one, uh, last but not least, huh, the, the smallest portion of the, the, the terroir of uh, Sancerre, it's Flint. Uh, Flint, I don't have a stone to show you, unfortunately, it's one of the most beautiful stones. Uh, it's uh, it's a, a, a kind of stone that, um, store the heat of the, of the day and give it back uh, during the night. So it's, it bring a nice warm uh, microclimate, which uh, usually uh, bring to, uh, to wine on this uh, kind of soil, a, a lot of fruit component. It's very diverse, huh? floral with acacia, uh, some, um, um, a lot of like rich and warm, ripe character. Uh, wow. So I've, if you ask me if I have a favorite, I would say the, the Flint, for me, uh, is a personality that I love because of this kind of layer of character. And when somebody has a terroir on Flint, uh, if uh, they don't decide to bottle it, to blend with the other two, uh, they usually uh, label uh, Silex uh, or Flint on the label because it brings, like I was saying, uh, this kind of tropical fruit because of the warm and ripe character and this mineral component, uh, which are uh, associated with like the smoky, uh, the gunpowder, uh, that will, uh, that will, why we call for a long time uh, the, the blanc fumé for Sauvignon Blanc, for the smokiness brought by the flint. So, well, so that's the three terroirs that we can find. And that's what you find in uh, Eric Louis wine. You have two thirds of um, uh, Tauvenay, which is one of the village, which is on the Cayotte. Um, so, most of the wine is this kind of immediate, fruity, lighter bodied, exciting uh, kind of fruit. And you have one third, which is uh, the um, uh, village of Menetreol, uh, which is one of the villages that has, is lucky to have both the Kimmer region Marl and the Flint. So well, that's what, what's exciting in this wine. And uh, if, you, if you taste it, the nose is really like uh, show showcasing the coyote, huh? this, uh, this uh, kind of fruity, immediate, and uh, that jump out of the glass, huh? this fruitiness, uh, fruitiness uh, that, you know, people sometimes associate easily Sauvignon Blanc with grapefruit, but for me it's an excess of Sauvignon Blanc. Usually nice Sauvignon Blanc, you find some, uh, some citrusy note, but it's more like a lemon, lime, mandarin, uh, or, or this kind of uh, uh, taste. Or smell. Then you have, uh, you definitely have this uh, iodine node, this salty node uh, that is brought by the, the, the Kimi region. Uh, you always, always shine in the wine when you try your Chablis, like Marie Claire was mentioning, or you try some Champagne and Kimi region, it's always the saltiness that come first. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a memory of the old sea. Uh, it's uh, the heritage of the old sea. 
and then you finish uh, with the smokiness. You really have this smoky note at the end and the flint to remind you that is here. It's pretty uh, imposant, you know, uh, and that's what uh, really uh, made me fall in love with this wine. Uh, I added this wine recently to my portfolio. I also love the philosophy of the estate. Uh, Eric Lui, uh, uh, the family is making wine since uh, 1860, uh, so it's a long story, even before the phylloxera. Uh, it's uh, it's great-great-grandmother who started the estate. Um, uh, Marie-Claire is asking something. So what do I like to eat with, uh, with Sancerre? Merci, Marie-Claire. Uh, so what I like to eat, uh, for me, um, there's a lot of river fish in the Loire, a lot of white fish uh, that, uh, uh, with this kind of beurre blanc, you know, that is kind of actually a specialty of the Nantes region, huh? uh, uh, this, uh, this sauce with, uh, with uh, the, the wine of the region. And for me, that's what represents well. Huh? You have this uh, texture of the fish huh? uh, that need this kind of zesty nuts from the, the, the Sauvignon Blanc and the buttery character that actually match well the, the flesh and the body of the wine and are always benefit of this kind of uh, lime and, and uh, uh, citrusy nuts uh, that cut through the fat again. So I like that. Uh, I also like something that is classic from uh, the... Uh, would you record? No, I, I, I didn't have all the questions. I wasn't written, but I, I think Raphael will, uh, will ask the question at the end, if you don't mind. Uh, I can't read all the questions. So uh, to finish, there was one, uh, one thing that I wanted to add. Uh, Loire Valley is a big region for uh, uh, goat cheese. There's actually six appellations of goat cheese in the Loire. Uh, saint maur de touraine Valençay, puligny saint pierre uh, and uh, which other one? Uh, celle sur cher And we have one in Sancerre called the Crotin de Chavignon, uh, which is this kind of like button, you know, uh, look like a little cork uh, with different level of aging. And for me, Sauvignon Blanc goes wonderfully with this kind of, uh, of goat cheese. When you have different aging that pair different uh, type of soil, it's pretty magnificent. When you go to this winery, actually, that's what they do. They have like a long uh, line of goat cheese of Croton Chavignol, uh, and they have all their wine who, who match uh, the, all the different characters. Voilà, so, sorry if I, I couldn't answer live hein, uh, the question, but uh, Raphael, I'm sure, will help me with that later. Voilà, so you, you, you maybe wonder about this label. Uh, it's uh, kind of an unusual label for Sancerre. Uh, it's actually a, um, a little reference to the Petit Prince. For those who read this, uh, you probably know, the Petit Prince from uh, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Uh, it, and it's all about their philosophy. Organic approach, so it's kind of this natural approach. Uh, bottling the wine according to the cycle of the moon uh, and this kind of genuine approach in a region that is usually kind of like elitist they didn't want that they want wine that are, are these down to earth that is accessible and that, that's what i think this wine is uh, uh is totally so they have one one, one quote that i like, like to say uh, so one only understand the things that one thinks that's from the petit prince and that's their philosophy letting people have time to uh, tame the wine. Wow. So we're going to do the other wine. Oh, voilà. Bye bye Sancerre. And we're going to go to Saint Nicolas de Bourgueil. Voilà. So I'm going to open the wine live. Voilà. So Saint Nicolas de Bourgueil, you can call it Saint Nicolas. I know Bourgueil is a very difficult uh, world to say. Uh, Saint Nicolas de Bourgueil is uh, the smallest appellation of this area for Cabernet Franc. Uh, it's 1,000 hectares uh, divided between 100 producers, uh, very easy to, uh, to get. And I love this appellation because of a unity of terroir. The terroir is one single type of soil, sand and gravel. Loire Valley was a uh, was built uh, really like all along the Loire, you find this kind of construction of the Loire. You have the Loire, the course of the river, that have shaped the river with alluvial terrace, uh, alluvial like sand, gravelly, and in the other side, hillside vineyard. 
of shock, different generation of shock. So usually when you see in the uh, northern side of the Loire, so the right bank, it's usually wines that are more on alluvial terrace, especially when you go down the Loire toward, toward Saint Nicolas uh, and, and Saumur. And the other side, it's usually more shock. And that's what we see in this part of the Loire. You have two area, uh, here, right here, four appellations that are known for uh, um, uh, Cabernet Franc, Chinon, Saumur Champigny, Saint Nicolas de Bourgueil, and Bourgueil. One side is gravelly and sand, so wines that are more lighter, more fruit forward, more easy to drink on. And the other side, Chinon, Saumur Champigny, you have wine on Tufau. Tufau, which is the kind of limestone that you find in the Loire, which give you more age-worthy, more structured kind of Cabernet Franc. So you have to know where your Cabernet Franc comes from to know which style we're gonna, we're gonna get. I love Cabernet Franc uh, from Saint Nicolas de Bourgueil for a few reasons. Uh, first, I work for the guy, uh, so I'm partial and, um, to, uh, to our friendship. But it's also the region that showcases the most genuine uh, approach to the Cabernet Franc. Since the terroir is, is not impairing too much of its character to the wine, uh, since, uh, since it, it, it's not shorty or, or complex like that, uh, it, it let really the wine speak. So when, the, when Cabernet Franc speak, it's a beautiful grape. It's not, I, I know for some people it's not the most sexy grape. People think of Cabernet, of Cabernet Sauvignon or Pinot Noir. Cabernet Franc is a tricky grape to grow. It's not easy, it don't, doesn't support mediocrity. It has to be at high maturity. Uh, it has to be harvested with a lot of care, uh, in preference uh, uh, by hand. Uh, so, most of the Loire uh, Cabernet Franc uh, we were shipped from the Loire were not at the level that people uh, should have expected. So that's why, you know, uh, when you see uh, Cabernet Franc like this, you can only fall in love with this beautiful grape. It's a parent of Cabernet Sauvignon. They have a lot of similarities. Uh, uh, you, you find this uh, when in nice Cabernet Franc, the, the violet, huh, which is one of the components of Cabernet Franc that you always get. This kind of graphite uh, kind of character, uh, forget the green pepper and, uh, and uh, art tannins. This is for the bad Cabernet Franc. Uh, nice Cabernet Franc are uh, velvety, silky. Uh, this thing is, um, depending where you are, uh, kind of like sour cherry, griot, uh, or uh, more darker cherry if you are on, on limestone soil. So, well, Cabernet Franc, it's a beauty, but it has to be respected at the level it deserves. This Cabernet Franc is made in stainless steel uh, from hand harvested grape. Uh, oui, tu, j'allais y arriver. <laughs> hand harvested grape uh, from uh, uh, wine. Um, so the, the, the wine uh, is uh, made uh, organically, uh, organic farming, uh, certified organic, and it uh, really displays in the wine this purity of organic uh, grapes. Uh, this clean approach uh, that really, for me, uh, characterizes this one. Pure, bright, and shining, uh, like the, the fruit is, is really shining. So, um, well, so that's, uh, that's what I wanted to say about this, uh, this Cabernet Franc. Uh, then we're gonna go to uh, the other side of the Loire. Uh, in the Saumur district. Voila, and I have a lot of wine to drink tonight. I'm sure my wife could be at least. Uh, so we're gonna do the Saumur sparkling, Saumur Brut. Well, Saumur is uh, where my family is from. Huh? Uh, my dad is from Saumur. Saumur is a beautiful city. Uh, you can't miss it. Huh? Uh, you usually find it in the, uh, the nice picture of the Loire. It's uh, a village, a city at the level of the river, but on top of the village, you have a little hillside with a castle, uh, dating back to the medieval time, that is no more Renaissance in the style, that overlooks the river, and it's the start of a plateau of, of Tufo limestone, which is known for, of course, the wine, but like marie I was mentioning in one of her comments for many other things. Uh, actually, the, this uh, plateau of limestone, was used as a quarry uh, to build all the castle in the Loire. So quarry means that you know they dig uh, the, the the stone from 
the hillside from the plateau and left miles and miles of cave that uh, really were beautiful, like uh, um, uh, used to, to make a mushroom. Actually, the Champignon de Paris, uh, I think we call it the Cremini mushroom, uh, is uh, made, was made in the, uh, the Loire. Um, uh, wait, okay. Um, so, I had a question uh, I was trying to see. So, the mushroom, uh, the Cremini mushroom, the Parisian uh, champignon, uh, was made in the Loire traditionally until uh, Poland and the eastern part of Europe was making them cheaper. Uh, so, we lost uh, this kind of iconic uh, production. Huh? And uh, it's also known for the trog trog troglodyte houses. Huh? You find a lot of uh, uh, nice houses huh, that are dig into the hillside. It's, it's actually spectacular and huh? quite beautiful uh, until like the, the beginning of the last century huh? uh, or late 19th century. You still had some people living in this house huh, that were dig into the, the, the hillside. We call them troglodytes. Huh? And another, of course, use that is uh, used now is uh, to use them as cave. And that's why uh, Saumur uh, became kind of the best and the leader in the production of, of sparkling in the Loire. In this category that we call the fine bulle de Loire, that include Crémont de Loire, for those who know it, uh, Mont Louis sur Loire and Vouvray, who are facing each other, the other side, one on the other side of the river. But Saumur is the largest area for the production of sparkling. Voilà. So like uh, the Champagne, uh, for a fraction of the price of, of Champagne, uh, they use méthode traditionnelle, uh, which is the finest way to make a sparkling. Uh, it's a, a method that is, uh, mean that the second fermentation happen into the bowl. First fermentation happen in a, a vat, uh, a stainless steel or concrete vat, like most of the, of the other wine. And uh, the second fermentation happen into the bowl. That's what we call the method uh, traditionnel. Uh, the second fermentation uh, occur with the addition in the base wine of sugar and yeast. And when you put these two together, you're pretty sure the fermentation will start and uh, you're gonna have the result, which is uh, CO2, carbon dioxide, that is trapped into the bowl and that gives you this refined bubbly. What makes the difference between uh, method traditionnel and let's say the Prosecco of what we call the category cuve close. It's that the, this category of cheaper bubbly are made in few weeks when these wines are made in few years uh, because there's aging in the, in the process which uh, refine the bubbly, integrate the bubbly and let the wine, uh, the quality of the wine speak instead of just the carbonation. That's why method traditionnel are usually a bit more expensive, uh, more, uh, more task, uh, more job is made to uh, make this, uh, this, this uh, sparkling wine. Uh, and really you can see the difference. Uh, this wine is made exclusively from Chenin Blanc. Uh, Chenin Blanc, uh, which is uh, the indigenous wine, a uh, grape uh, from the Loire, uh, originated from the Mont Chenin, which is uh, known to be like close to Vouvray. It's a grape that uh, uh, has high acidity. To make sparkling, we need high acidity. That's why Champagne is Champagne, uh, because of the northern location of Champagne, they couldn't get enough ripeness uh, to make still wine, so they, they, they specialized in, uh, in sparkling wine. And we're lucky with Chenin Blanc, provide us with enough acidity to balance any blend and, and to make like uh, uh, one of the most versatile type of kind of wine, uh, Chenin Blanc in the Loire. Uh, can be dry, uh, can be sparkling, can be different level of sweetness huh, from liquoreux to moelleux, etc. So it's one of the most versatile grapes. Huh. Um, according to specialists and a lot of us, we usually consider Chenin Blanc one of the most uh, versatile and most, one of the most beautiful grapes with Riesling and Chardonnay, of course. Huh. Voilà. So the, um, the, this wine is aged for uh, a year before uh, delivering the wine before uh, um, releasing the wine and that you can see uh, in, the, in the tasting. I'm going to finish that and we're going to try this voilà. so what you get in this uh, the Chenin Blanc generally is a, um, 
you find some kind of honey, um, honeycomb uh, kind of character, waxy nuts uh, in the Chemin Blanc. We get a lot of white flower in the mid palette uh, in uh, uh, most of the Chemin Blanc. And then always the acidity and the bright uh, freshness of Chemin Blanc is, uh, is always, always going back, cleaning your palette, making Chemin Blanc uh, one of the most like uh, um, food friendly wine, basically. Huh? This uh, estate, huh, Chateau de la Durandière, is based in uh, the village of uh, montreuil belay which is actually where my family still have their uh, family home, and it's our direct neighbor. So I didn't go too far to find this wine. Uh, we nearly have a pipeline between the winery and, uh, and, and us, uh, so can you imagine? Uh, it's, uh, it's really a, a well, families that have been making sparkling since generations, specialized in that, and really providing us with a very affordable and beautiful Beautiful bubbly. Voilà, so the, if you, if Rafael, you have some question, because uh, I couldn't uh, answer all the questions, I'm happy to uh, answer. Uh, a few more things to say, but you know, let's give the chance to everybody to uh, get their question answered. Rafael? Yes, yes, yes. I will come back online. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, okay, good. Let me start with um, a question from uh, Philippe. Um, because you talked about white wines of the Loire and he's asking you is there a white wine that you would want to recommend with a cheese plate because usually mm. people always think about a red wine but is there a white wine that you would recommend? Yeah cheese plate uh, is, a, is a tricky um, uh, pairing, uh, wine pairing. Uh, you know there's this like legend uh, or basically uh, or Maybe the, the tradition in France to pair uh, cheese with uh, red wine. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So usually when my, my, my parents or grandparents were doing that, I wouldn't say anything. If they like it, it's fine, you know. Uh, but, uh, but it's usually the worst pairing with the most variety of, uh, of, of cheese. Because of the milk and the lactose, uh, it doesn't go well with the tannins of the red. So it's usually um, kind of get the red wine tighter and doesn't allow you to enjoy your cheese the best way. So that's very, you know, white wine, of course, uh, is, a, is the best, uh, is, is a good way to, 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 uh, to, to pair. But for me, a go-to is a sparkling wine. Wow. Basically, it's the easiest pairing, uh, a Chenin Blanc, for example, this, with your cheese platter, you can't be wrong. It match most of the, the cheese that you have in, uh, in your platter. I imagine like the, the, the average cheese platter is three cheese, huh? uh, three or four cheese, huh? you have a cheese, a, a, a camembert, and a bleu. You can't really find one wine, uh, a, a white wine that's really gonna go well with all of them. Sparkling, easier to clean your palate, uh, brings this kind of exciting bubbly to pair with most of your cheese platter. I would go with bubbly. Yes, that sounds good. That sounds good. Um, Another question from, actually from um, uh, Ralph. And he asked the question, is this wine aging wood? And if it is, what kind of wood do they use? Mm -hmm. in the Which one? Uh, well, any wine. I mean, do they use, what kind of different woods do they use for the barrels, for the wine? So, I'm sorry, there's no, no oak at all used in this wine. Oh, wow. interesting. Yeah, no, you know, most of the wine in the Loire, like I was saying, uh, I would say even 80% of the wine in the Loire doesn't see any oak. You don't need oak to make wine. Uh, most, uh, even wines that goes in oak, they go in stainless steel or concrete uh, before, uh, before they are put in oak. So oak is, is uh, used for aging in France uh, to, to bring the wine to its maturity. So it's not here to uh, make the wine. You don't need oak to make wine. So. Uh, I choose this wine, and it's kind of characteristic of the law. I didn't choose them on purpose, but they don't see any oak. Wow. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Yeah. I did not know that. Um, and there's a question from Gérard. He Gérard. Is, Gérard is an onologist of the chamber. <laughs> and is there a classification for the Loire wines like we have, like he has in Burgundy? 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a, it's a good question because that's one thing that uh, I meant to tell you that I didn't. So uh, in the Loire, there are 60 appellations. Huh? Oh. There are 60 AOC of wine. Of Villa, there are some regional appellations. Huh? The regional appellation Touraine, the regional appellation Anjou, uh, some, uh, some uh, few other uh, regional appellations. And then you have village appellation. We must be have village with no cru classification. There's one Grand Cru in the Loire. This Grand Cru is uh, a Car de Chaume. Voilà. Mm. Car de Chaume, which is in the Anjou region, right here. It's a tiny, tiny appellation, which is uh, at the uh, south of Angers, specialized in late harvest wine. Voilà. Soon, they're going to be two other Grand Cru, also in this area, in Savenier, uh, which is going to be uh, Savenier Roche au Moine and Savenier Coulet de Serre. But besides that, there's no other Premier Cru or Grand Cru in the world. So there's no, the, you can compare it to uh, uh, the Burgundy or Bordeaux for this reason. We're not, we're not as uh, fancy. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Marie Claire had a question about Savenier, I think. We're, we're speaking of Savenier. You want to talk about that first? Yes, I have one more question for you. Okay. But, uh, do you want to answer Marie Claire's question? Or do you I, like I couldn't see Marie Claire, uh, I couldn't see all the questions. Okay, she was speaking I, of Coulet de Yeah, I can send it again. Uh, my question that I received from Ralph is um, how long will these wines age? How long is that? So, yeah. so I picked wine that uh, are uh, not the most, uh, they don't have the most longevity. Uh, this one is, uh, it's a combination of terroir, like I was saying, so I would say five years. Huh? And this one is pretty similar. You know? well, the one that could age for me the most is Chenin Blanc Sparkling. So you can keep it for, you know, close to 10 years if you want, uh, but we keep better. But these two, they are like really ready to drink uh, right now and the next few years. Mm. So Marie-Claire, uh, Coulet de Serran, Nicolas Joly. Hey, uh, that's a question that we all have in, uh, in the, the wine world. It's, it's a little specific. Uh, I don't know if it's going to interest everybody. Uh, Nicolas Joly is a pope of biodynamic. It's for every of us is the one that teach us about organic and biodynamic. But his wine uh, for me are not the pure expression of, uh, of Savonier. Uh, they are not reliable. A lot of people, huh? sometimes it's a hit or miss. Sometimes you find one bottle that is spectacular and one bottle that is a, a flaw. Mm -hmm. And I don't like that. I'm not uh, this kind of like uh, wine specialist uh, that uh, like to play a Russian roulette with my wine. I want really purity and, and wines that are reliable. And the good organic farmer, that's why we, people say natural wine, you know, natural wine, it's not reliable. I, I, I say no. It's a farmer who is not doing the job for me to, uh, because he want to be, he's maybe too elitist, to be down to earth, to say, I will bring you a wine that is reliable, that is consistent, and a lot of natural wine are that way. So a legend about uh, natural wine or organic wines that are not uh, 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 very pure and clean and, uh, and I don't agree. No. All right, that's good. <laughs> that's good. I have one more question and it's from a lady called Evelyn. And Evelyn would like to know um, a French sweet wine. What would you recommend if she wants mm -hmm. a French sweet wine? Like she likes uh, Moscato. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, okay, so sweet uh, sweet wine, uh, bubbly. Uh, I don't know, just a regular wine. I think maybe. Uh, so uh, in, in France, huh, you have three. Uh, let's say, in terms of sweet wine, you have this category that we call late harvest. Uh, that uh, like Sauterne, for example, in Bordeaux, uh, yes. some Givers Raminer or Riesling in Alsace. Uh, or in the Loire, it's a region called the Léon, which provides you with uh, sweeter wine uh, made by, uh, uh, later, uh, by 
noble rot, what you call it, the, the botrytis, that uh, develop this concentration of sugar. So you have wine that can be as high as 100, 250 grams of sugar per liter. So there's uh, Alsace, Bordeaux, and the Loire are really specialized in that. Then you have the fortified wine, uh, this category uh, in uh, uh, the Cognac and Armagnac area. area uh, you have the Flock de Gascogne, uh, in, uh, the, you have the, the um, uh, area like uh, uh, Muscat de Rivesalt, uh, Pinot des Charentes, uh, some other wine uh, in Banyuls uh, toward the southern part of France that are wines that are muté, so with addition of, uh, of uh, alcohol uh, to uh, blend with uh, grape, grapefruit. So you have all these categories in France. Huh? I, can, I can send you the name if you need to. Um, but that's the two categories that come in mind first. Huh? Uh, wines that are natural concentration of sugar, huh? only grape, only juice of, of, of grape. And the other that is combination of uh, raw alcohol uh, from the winery and grape juice. Okay. All right. Thank you for that answer. Um, I will take a last Question from uh, Marie Claire. <laughs> Do you think Savonnière is the king of Chenin Blanc? Oui. <laughs> yes, there is no question. For me and for a lot of us, Savonnière, I mean, for people who, who are fascinating with Chenin, fascinated by Chenin Blanc, and I am, uh, Savonnière is, uh, is just, just uh, the king uh, or the queen. Uh, uh, it's the terroir that is the most spectacular, uh, the most beautiful setting. When you are in Rochemoine or Coulet de Serran, uh, you have this, uh, this fault, uh, this valley that dig, uh, that plunge into the Loire, basically, uh, with a, a combination of all the terroir of the Loire that you can imagine, uh, from basa 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 basaltic, volcanic, some sandstone, some sediment of uh, the or shallow sea uh, with, with limestone. So for me, Savannah is no question. It's just a beauty. Hmm. Another right. question from Marie-Claire about Sauvignon Blanc. Yes. Marie-Claire knows a lot about wines too. <laughs> no, but I mean, if, if, you, if you love yeah. Chenin Blanc like I do, uh, Sauvignon, well, uh -huh. find a Sauvignon. You know, they can be a little, they, they can seem a little pricey uh, toward the uh, $30, or, but, but really it's an experience that is, to me, if you want to experience the diversity of French Seven years is, is just, wow. And what, what would you uh, combine it with? What kind of food would you combine it with? Seven years. Hmm. Seven years, uh, for me, uh, it's, it's a wine that uh, can be viewed with a, with a large spectrum of, of, uh, of food. Because, you know, people think, well, that's, what I say. Uh, the, you know, so, seven years is so complex that it can go, of course, with the first suggestion, with, uh, with uh, this, goat cheese platter or, or uh, poisson or beurre blanc. But for me, it also you can explore it with uh, a lot of uh, kind of mealy uh, fish, mealy seafood, uh, or even some poultry and chicken. And uh, uh -huh. uh, I can imagine like a chi chicken uh, poulet au mori uh, with that, you know, because right. of the texture and the power of it, you can really go uh, with uh, earthy, uh, earthier food. For sure, with mushroom, even, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, thank you. My opinion. Thank you so much for all these uh, questions. Um, uh, yes. I have a final question, so yes. I'm going to speak, because yes. it's a question from, uh, uh, I think, Ralph. Where can we put, when can, can we purchase this wine? Yes. So it's easy, huh? my, uh, my wife uh, has a, a coffee shop uh, in, uh, in uh, Carborough. Uh, and uh, we can, uh, you can purchase the wine through, uh, if you email me, uh, uh, you can purchase the wine through the coffee shop uh, and, and we'll find a way to, uh, to get them to you. What, uh, what is the name uh, of the coffee, coffee shop? It's Open Eye Cafe. Open Eye Cafe in Carborough, the living room of Carborough. Yeah. So you get you get uh, you get to me uh, first because they, they won't necessarily have the wine in stock. So you have to get through me. Uh, you can reach me through my Facebook, uh, Authentic Vin, um, or Thomas Meunier, or you can get my email through uh, Raphael uh, for sure. Uh, so no problem, Ralph. Uh, we find a way to get this wine to you. 
And we still have some actually in, in stock uh, ready right away if you want to purchase. And I think we share the, the cost of it uh, through the, the invitation. Yes. No problem. And we can order more if you need. Okay. And if you want to discover Sauvignon, I can, I can find it for you too. <laughs> I think we all want to try it. We'll I'm try sure. It. I have a Russian wine actually in my portfolio. I can pass you the information. I, I really, I really thank you for this wonderful presentation. I felt like I had taken a class at the university, uh, French Loire Wines 101. I'm serious. Well, yeah, <laughs> it, it was fun. I thank you for giving me the opportunity to present my region. Huh? Uh, it's a wonderful chance. Huh? Uh, and uh, yeah, let's do it again. Huh? If you want me, I'm here. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Thomas. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Merci à tous. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bonsoir. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.